Welcome back to the Peggy Smedley Show. We are coming to you live from CES 2018, and there's been a lot of exciting things, and it continues right now. Right now, I'm joined with Davide Vigano. You are the CEO and one of the co-founders of Sensoria, correct? Yes, I am. And I'm loving it. You brought a product <laughs> for us to see. Tell us all about it. Hi, Peggy. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Well, delighted. So this is actually a smart shoe with textile sensors embedded in a plantar area of the foot. So the cool thing about this shoe is that it comes with uh, pretty fancy microelectronics that we call Sensoria Core. Sensoria Core is a nine axis IMU, so it's basically the same technology that airplanes use to fly in the clouds. But it's super light, eight grams, so it's a fraction of an ounce. You simply snap this piece of electronics in the back of your shoe and it starts pushing data to your phone. So what exactly, when you're putting this data in there, what are we trying to track? So what we track with the shoe are multiple data sets. So of course we, we can track step counting, we can track cadence, we can track speed, but most importantly, we can track other critical health indicators such as impact forces, foot landing. So if a patient has gone through surgery, like a hip replacement or a knee replacement or a stroke, we all know that they have to go through rehab, right? So uh, very often there is rigidity in that part of the body. And so landing on the forefoot needs to be brought back to a, more of a midfoot strike, right? So that's what the physical therapist is striving for. We can detect all of that information, including the movement in space of, of the leg, right? So instead of having self-reporting from the patient, uh, related to rehab, we finally have a quantified objective data set that allows us to know if the patient is doing what he's supposed to and how well he's doing. So looking at this right now, talk about the technology. Are you working now with 4G, 5G? How are you guys working with tracking all this information? So right now, the, the product that you see here is actually targeting runners that have already gone through injuries. So think about runner's knee, there is a reason why it's called runner's knee. 65% um, yeah. of runners Hard. get injured every year. But we also have uh, the opportunity to actually use the same type of technology in other products, as an example related to diabetes, right? In our booth, we have a Moto Smart by Optima Monitor, which actually allows us to monitor activity and compliance of a diabetic patient, and, and therefore reduce risk of amputations. So tracking all of this though, are you doing it through an app, I assume? Yes, there is a mobile application that actually tracks all the data depending on the activity of the patient or the consumer, right? For running, we have a Sensoria Run 2.0 application and together with Optima Monitor, we actually work on a specific, uh, specific application for diabetic patients. Is the product, you said the product's available now? The product is in pre-order right now at 50% off, so it's $99 including the electronics and then it will retail for $199. So looking at this right now, who are you looking to actually target as the audience right now? I know you're talking about, is you, are you going through PT, the folks that are offering PT, you're yes. going through the doctors, the, phys the patients themselves? Yeah, we, we are fortunate enough to have a great partnership with uh, Genesis Rehab Services, uh, fully owned subsidiary of Genesis Healthcare, the largest post-acute he post healthcare provider in the country. Um, they own 453 um, assisted living and skilled nursing facilities, but most importantly, GRS, Genesis Rehab Services, employs 17,000 physical therapists, and they see, Peggy, they see 55,000 patients per day. So the PT has a vested interest in improving outcomes, and so is the PT that is going to actually have the patient wear this type of technology, so we can finally monitor compliance and the rehab um, progress. Uh, for each one of the patients. Now let's talk about once they go through all of the physical therapy and, and the compliance. Now afterwards, you know, because physical therapy t sometimes takes six months, eight months, and they're really doing... Now what if somebody says, I want to make sure I don't fall into bad habits. Are you actually helping them look at that even afterwards? Because we all do that. We've injured ourselves somehow and we say, you know, I know that I, I don't want to re-injure myself. Right. Are you right. looking at that to help them Absol with that as well? Absolutely. That, that is the key point, right? The key point is really to actually create technology that is actually physically part of the consumer workflow, right? We all wake up in the morning, we take a shower, we put our clothes and footwear on, right? That's, that's what we do. And that's why we, the vision of Sensoria is that the garment is the next personal computer, right? So we just uh, avoid wearing plastic and steel uh, wristbands and things that are not part of the, 
of, of our daily workflow. So we won't forget about you know putting on socks and shoes and, and t-shirts hopefully, right? So that's, that's, what, that's what we do. And unfortunately, each consumer becomes a patient from time to time. And so it's the same workflow. What wears out more, the shoe or the sensor? How do no, you end up having that's that? That's a great question, actually, uh, that very few people ask. It's uh, obviously the shoe, right? If I'm a runner in particular, I, I, I go through a bunch of shoes. And that's why we allow the, the runner to actually snap the electronics, which is the most expensive piece of, of, of the puzzle here. <laughs> and right. you just uh, throw away your worn out shoes and, and buy a fresh pair and you snap the electronics into them. So when you first buy the fir first pair yep. of shoes, then how do you do the replacement then of something like that? Oh, you just uh, you just uh, take the sensory core and you snap it into your new pair of so shoes. So how does the replacement work? So I assume the first pair is more expensive versus Correct. the replacement. How Correct. does that work? Correct. Correct. So uh, uh, the, the shoes without the electronics are cheaper than the shoes with the electronics, of course. So feedback right now, what, what has it been to be able to use this? I'm sure you've been in beta working with people yep. and testing and seeing what kind of improvement they're making with this and giving the, the physical therapist saying, okay, we're getting some really good results on how they're doing it with the shoe versus without the shoe. How has that been? The, 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 the feedback is phenomenal, primarily from people that have gone through injuries before, right? So we do have a full uh, mobile application called Sensoria Run. We do have a web dashboard as well. Uh, the fascinating aspect is the fact that we can actually compare a runner against his best self, right? So if I go to the same and do the same run, we have an artificial intelligence engine that talks to me in real time and keeps me honest. We call it Mara. It's our Siri, <laughs> but it's very specific to running. We're going to do exactly the same for patients uh, for rehab and for patients for diabetes in the future. Is this mostly targeted to those who are runners? I mean, what other kinds of, you know, because people get injured doing other kinds of activities and sports and things. So how is this more geared to them or what are you looking well, to do there? In the running community is the one that is more injury prone, right? There are about 120 million You runners. haven't seen me play tennis. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure tennis is another, is, another, is another scenario. We have built a full SDK so that partners can actually build specific solutions for tennis, cycling, baseball, football. Um, we're a small startup, so we can only do one thing at a time. And uh, we try to do one thing at a time and do it well. So <laughs> that's, that's why we focus on running for now. And we'll focus on rehab and diabetes next. So talk about diabetes, those kind of things, because that's a really important thing with shoes and we're actually walking and those kind of things, because those are pressure points under there that they don't even know that they have. And talk about exactly. what you're looking there. So first of all, uh, diabetic foot complications is a problem of epidemic proportions. Um, a limb is lost to diabetes every 30 seconds in the world. And uh, the reason is exactly what you said. Uh, diabetic patients don't feel their feet normally. They suffer from a condition called peripheral neuropathy. 70% of diabetic patients suffer from that. So they don't feel their feet normally. When there is a diabetic foot ulcer, uh, they have to go through surgery for de debridement. Uh, there is probably very often a skin graft applied to that area. That area needs to be mechanically offloaded. And that is what Optima Molitor does with the Moto Smart. So we allow the patient to actually have mechanical offloading. As long as the patient wears that device, we have the same level of efficacy of a f total contact cast. People don't want to be put in a to <laughs> I yeah, mean, we know, right? We, people don't want to be put in a cast these days. They just have to wear that device. As long as they wear the device, the Moto Smart, they have the same level of efficacy as a full contact cast, and so we can reduce amputations. Through the Sensoria Core technology, which is exactly the same technology that the same patient can use to go walking or running, <laughs> we can actually detect not only activity, of course, but also compliance, right? If the patient takes off that device, it immediately receives a text message. His loved ones are going to, esc we're going to escalate to the loved ones and send them a text message. And the clinician has a web dashboard with all the patient population. We call it traffic light because we have a red, green, and yellow type of approach. So it's so, easy for them to understand. Just correct. the way we were taught when we were correct. children. Correct, correct, super, super simple. So when you look at this right now, is that set up as well now, or is that your next evolution, as you're saying? That is our next step. We do have the Moto Smart in our booth at the Sands here for the first time. We're honored by the par partnership with Optima uh, Molitor, and uh, the next step is actually to bring it to market, which will happen later this year. So t talk to us through that, step by step. Yep. Products you'll have, sequential. You'll have this one for runners this, available. Th so the, 
the product that you see here is going to be available by end of March. So by, okay. you know, as soon as the weather improves in most of, most of the country. So people can start running. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Because you don't want to be running the, in Chicago at this cold time exactly. right now. <laughs> you will have a lot we, of injuries. Maybe know. you do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you may not want to. <laughs> so the, the Sensoria Run 2.0 application is available together with Mara, the artificial intelligence engine. People, It's free. People can download it from the App Store right now. The web dashboard is available right now. Um, we will uh, now start the implementation of the software related to the Moto Smart, so that we have the availability later this year. We have not announced pricing or timing on that. Do you have the app on your phone yet, or anything I, that we can see? I do. I'd love to see that if we sure. could. Sure. So show that. Okay. So Hopefully, we have the right uh, the right tilt. <laughs> we'll zoom in on that. Uh, Here we go. So this is actually a pretty interesting screen that you see here. This is a training plan that helps runners transition from a traditional shoe like the one we have here to a minimalistic shoe. In our booth, we have uh, Vivo Barefoot shoes, minimalistic, super cool. But in order to learn how to run with a very minimalistic zero drop shoe, we have built a full training plan, multiple weeks, that help people increase cadence and reduce impact so that they can safely transition to a shoe like that, right? Or I can simply go for a run uh, and I, I'm gonna receive Mara's feedback, or I can actually focus on distance running, I can focus on pace, time, and also we have upper garments that actually detect heart rate. So uh, I can actually make sure that I stay in my heart rate zone depending on my sex and my age. So this is all available right now. We also have a very cool feature called Heart Sentinel, where through our uh, upper garments, we can detect uh, VTMBF, very risky and dangerous situations. Uh, when we do, we send an alert immediately to a loved one uh, so that uh, help can be on its way. So they've overexerted themselves. Correct. Will you there is a risk of, in that case, there is a risk of sudden, sudden cardiac arrest. Will right? you be so looking, does this app have anything, trying to do anything, collaboration, a community or anything like that? So runners yeah. might want. Yeah, we're working very closely with multiple, multiple academic institutions right now. On the diabetic side, we're working with Dr. David Armstrong at USC. Uh, he's a professor of surgery at USC. Uh, we're working with University of Parma Hospital in Italy on uh, cardiology. And we're working on many, uh, with many other uh, very, very, very strong academic groups around the country, and we're honored by that. What's the biggest challenge in bringing a product like this to market that you find? Is where, it... where do you want me to start? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long podcast. <laughs> no, well, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, getting people it's, to really embrace so, so, a product. So let me, let me walk you through the level of complexity so people uh, appreciate it. It's, so we had to build the textile sensors ourselves. We couldn't, we couldn't find textile pressure sensors in the market. So it took us about three years to create a sensor that would be washable, that would be thin, that would be comfortable, right? This, the same sensors that we have in the shoe, as you probably know, we can put in a sock. So the patient can decide to wear a sock or a shoe. So we increase, we increase the opportunities of compliance as well, right? The second level of complexity is building the electronics, uh, building the software on the electronics, and then the cloud system that serves that, right? So the level of complexity, uh, quite frankly, is daunting uh, still. And that's why we built the SDK, the Sensoria Developer Kit, so people can start from a building block and then build solutions on top of that. So when you work with that and trying to get others to be a part of the SDK on this, how do you get them to be wanting to participate? What's the goal for you to do that? Well, our goal is to open the platform to people that can actually build uh, solutions. So we cannot and we will not be able to build all the solutions that could potentially be built. You mentioned tennis. We, have, we don't have the right skills to build a tennis, tennis type of uh, application, but you know, probably a shoe very similar to this one could <laughs> be built uh, and an application could, could be built to try to improve the game and the performance of the player and reduce, reduce risk of injury as, as well, right? The feedback that you hope to get from patients who start to use this, will it be the way that they actually lean and things like that? Ultimately, a feedback from what they're saying is, I'm struggling, you know, I'm struggling yeah. in size or whatever, because some people 
in just in general because you then have to build a shoe that's custom fit for every type of person right now we don't have to uh, because again by having a platform built we can actually allow other footwear manufacturers such, such as optima molitor or vivo barefoot to create their own specific custom footwear solutions that are smart and we can bring them to market in a fraction of the time and at a fraction of the cost so that is that is exactly the exactly the goal. So when you look long term, what do you ultimately hope will that you hope to make this something that patients say, look, you've improved my quality of life from this? Is that what your ultimate goal with something Absolutely. like this? Absolutely. If we can reduce just a single injury, if we if we can reduce falls, if we can help rehab and therefore as we all know, rehab helps reduce falls, right? Um, we're we're gonna be super happy. Uh, we have a story that I'd like to share with sure. you. Um, there is a very small startup in Maine. Their name is Upbed. Three people, three engineers. Uh, they built a solution on our sensory core device for a local assisted living facility. Uh, they put the, our technology on a patient uh, two weeks ago for the first time. It's an Alzheimer patient. Uh, the challenge was this patient fell ten times the week before, ten times. Um, the week after, thanks to this technology, he has not had a single fall yet. Wow. And uh, the CEO of this little teeny tiny com uh, company, he, you know, the, the, the family of that patient was hugging him, right? So uh, this type of stories, you know, we're going through a lot of challenges and, and, uh, and it's hard, but, but I, we think that it's meaningful and we can do well in the good. And those are the kind of things that I think make a difference, right? Yes, I mean, actually, this is what I wanted I have to another show you. one. This is the Motosmart that we were talking about. So this is uh, a diabetic foot ulcer, secondary prevention product, right, after surgery. Uh, this is the product that we actually put on a patient to make sure that there is mechanical floating, right? This is the alternative to the full contact cast that I was talking about. Guess what? The same type of technology that I showed you that it goes into that cool running shoe now goes into this Italian designed Moto Smart product, right? <laughs> so big difference, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and, that, and those are the kind of solutions that are different. Are there? Is there anything on the market right now that you've seen that's competitive with what you're doing? Quite frankly, no. We have not. We have not seen anything yet. We think we are the first ones to market, um, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll we'll have to learn and improve the product, of course, because this is a version one, but. I'm super excited about it. What has been the feedback? You know, you see a lot of the other companies come by. Sands is the, the, the land of innovation over there. <laughs> yep. So what has been the feedback as companies come by and talk to you about what you're bringing to market? Uh, some people are actually surprised because most of, most of the technology that you see at the Sands is a is siloed approach, right? So there is a consumer product. It's just a consumer product, and it does great for a specific solution. And we think more platform and broadly we think that a single component can be reused. And you know, for assisted living and skilled nursing, we know that uh, these organizations are very much under pressure in terms of costs, uh, given the new legislation and Medicare moving and quickly shifting towards 70%, 80% at risk. Right. So we think that there is an opportunity to actually create what we call IOMI, Internet of me instead Internet of Internet of, of things, right? All right <laughs> IoT, it. we're interested in IoT, but I think as an aging baby boomer, I'm more interested in IOMe, my own data, and how can my own data improve my own health? <laughs> well, there are, as, as we see this graying of America and the graying of the world kind of thing, we have more people living longer, right? That's you right. have to have solutions that help, and people want to live longer and exercise more. That's right, and we want to actually stay at home, right? And, right. and, 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 and be independent for as long as we possibly can, right? We can we can do that, not just in the U.S. but in other countries, countries as well. I mean, of course, Italy, where I come from, or U.K. or Germany, have the same aging issues. That's what we're right? saying globally. That's by what we're 2040, saying. according to the CDC, here in the U.S., over 20% of the population will be age 65 and older, right? But China has the same problem due to, due to the single single child policy they put in place a few years ago. They have the same aging challenge without having the number of physical therapists or clinicians that we have in this country. So technology needs to extend the reach of the clinician, not just in the US, but in other countries as well. Looking at this right now, when you think about this, when you think about other companies that can help you bring this product to market, 
do you think that they'll look at this as saying, you know, it, it delivers the right things that government regulation will allow? You know, meeting all the certifications that are required here in the, in the states versus what you have to do to meet requirements internationally. I mean, because there's different standards amongst well, U.S. and globally. That's a great question. And, and that's the other level of complexity, right? Uh, we are fortunate enough to actually work with companies like uh, Optima Molitor that has already gone through conclusive clinical trials and clinical studies on the, on the, model, on the Optima Motors that you see here. So we're not starting from scratch. We're starting from research. This is an FDA class one cleared product today. Right? So from a regulatory perspective, I think we're doing well. Uh, we need help on the reimbursement side. Uh, we think that this product should be reimbursed. Uh, and it's, we all know, as we all know, getting CMS codes is super challenging. But yeah, if anyone has ideas, we'd love to hear their thought on that. Well, we think it's wonderful. Where can our listeners go to, again, price? Give us an idea again on price and all of this. We have not uh, On the announced. shoe and everything. Oh, on, on the shoe, we have announced pricing. On the shoe, you, the, you, the people can go to sensoriafitness.com and they can actually pre-order the shoe for $99, as I said, during the show. The price will go up to $199 retail uh, immediately after. Uh, we have not announced price for the Optima Molitor Moto Smart uh, product yet, we will soon. Okay. Um, but people can actually find a lot of information on sensoriahealth.com right now. All right, well, we appreciate you spending time with us. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. <laughs> All right, listeners, well, we are out of time for this segment, but you can tweet at us and any questions, and we'll certainly get them along here at Connected W Mag and anything else you want to learn because we, you know, we're broadcast regularly at 12 noon central with the regular Peggy Smedley show, but we still have got more coming to you live from CES 2018. So stick around. This is the Peggy Smedley show, the podcasting voice of IOT and rele relevant technology. And remember with great technology comes great responsibility. We'll be right back right after this quick break.